100, Terry Jones, we uh, think that he's in race one as a misprint, has 22, but I'm sure he's not on his bike 300. We want to see the brakes going up that first straight, and it is Richie Knight that breaks into that first corner. Oh, I say he was leading going into the first corner, but he's now already under pressure. This is the first race of the afternoon. We're with the small 250s, and it is Carl Wilkes that's in the hot pursuit of Richie Knight. Those two away from the field a little bit already opening up a bit of a gap, but Carl Wilkes opening up and going round that very wide bottom corner, allowing Richie Knight to come underneath him again. It's Richie Knight that still leads from Carl Wilkes. In third place is Terry Howe at the moment, but that looks as if it might change on that top corner, as again we see this scrap for the lead going on between Carl Wilkes and Richie Knight. Now well, Terry Howe indeed in third place, but Dean Camier trying to change that, so a great scrap going on for that third place as well as that first place. Two riders equally matched at the front, and indeed they are in third and fourth. Dean Camier looks to be starting to get the better of it though, as comes moves through into a comfortable third place. As we watch them go into their last lap, and Carl Wilkes looks over his shoulder to see that Richie Knight is still close to him. Dean Camion now starting to close the gap on those front two. Terry Howe starts to lose a bit of ground on those front three. They all start to close up on the back straight. Of course, his 250 power also very even. He makes the racing very, very close. And Dean Camion going around the outside of Richie Knight as he goes into the last bend. So as they come to the line, it is going to be Carl Wilkes who wins. But Dean Camion gets second place in front of Richie Knight in third. And Terry Howe finishes in fourth. Four, number 248, Carl Wilkes. Second place, number 44, Dean Camier. Third place, number 229, Richie Knight. Fourth place, number 32, Terry Howell. Fifth place, number 300, that's Terry Giles. And sixth place, 26. Seventh place, 49. Eighth place, 20. And the winning time, 127.01. 127.01 the time then. Those numbers, if you missed any of those, 248, 44, 229, 32. 300, 26, 49 and 20. Race 2. And you can see what I mean about a very strong competition that we've got in this 250 class. Because if you look down the lineup, one or two changes, but you can see on grid 4 we've got Mark Wadsworth. Mark Schofield joins them. Mike Appleton, who's had a good season so far. Lee Strudwick. There's no Richard Smith, but their place is taken by Matthew Street and third place and looking to see who the answer is that's coming through but the man who's leading in that very distinctive helmet is of course Mark Wadsworth well you certainly could take it away from this rider on a 250cc machine he certainly is always the man to beat Mark Wadsworth leads from Lee Street in second place Mike Appleton is up in the third it's those riders that are trying to close that gap down on this very very clever rider Mark Wadsworth well, you can see how close that first race was, but Mark Wadsworth really making race two look as if it's uh, going to be very easy for him this afternoon. Lee Street still trying to close that gap. Mike Aston trying to put him under pressure as well. He's still on third place. Watson's right the straight, you can see that Mark Wadsworth is already starting to catch one of our riders. Oh, that indeed was Phil Rance, and I can only assume that Phil Rance has got a problem because Phil's normally a lot, lot quicker than this. He's got it back in fourth place and lost contact on those front three. I wonder if Mark Wadsworth had a problem on that bottom corner, or did he just keep himself out of the way of Phil Ranson? He now moves through on the inside of Phil Ranson and comes towards the chequered flag. That's going to be his first win of the afternoon. I do think he had some sort of problem, so that's worth keeping an eye on as the afternoon develops. Two fifties and a win. Very convincingly there for number 344, Mark Wadsworth. Second place, number 75, Lee Street. Third place, number 558, Mike Appleton. Fourth place, number 124, Keith Strudwick. Fifth place, number 176. Sixth place, number 741. And seventh place, number 61. The winning time, interestingly enough, 127.19. Compare that to the first team. 
344-75-558-124-176-741-61 and the winning time 127.19. this 250 competition. I think we're going to be in for some great racing in 250s. Problems for John Dormer on that first corner. I'm sure there's a lot of people here going to be expecting to see John Dormer go well in this 250 class. He pulls out on the first bend. It looks as if it was just a cutout and he's now back in action. So John Dormer now with a great fight has got a lot of ground to make up on the rest of the field. So keep your eye not only on the winners or the leaders I should say but also on John Dormer. Can he fight his way back through the field as we watch to see Jason Stott leading? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interest on John Dormer. He's got a lot of work to do to close up on the rest of the field because already at that bottom bend. He goes very, very wide and I do think he's pulled out yet again so there is problems for John Dormer. As we watch Jason Stock come round off that top bend, the leading the third of the 250 heats. In second place, desperately trying to close that gap is Ian Rutter. Well, I think we really have got a who's who of 250 racing in the UK at the moment. Final at the end of the day, that certainly is going to be something worth waiting to see. Before that, a lot of heat scoring to do, and Jason Stock takes the checkered flag in race three. Ian Rutter crosses the line in second place, so both those two scoring well, as indeed you would have expected them to. three then uh, another of the 250 first leg and a win for number 94 that's Jason Stott in second place number nine Ian Rutter third place number 23 Steve Hines fourth place number 139 Dave Mears fifth place number 48 Brian Cornelius and sixth place number 19 seventh place 71 the winning time 125.8 so and number 91 Wayne Boys and Simon King so a very strong lineup of 500cc sidecars here this afternoon. I wonder who you would pick to actually take away the spoils this afternoon. Looking down that list of riders, Dave Collin, I've seen in action this year, a very, very quick competitor. Alan Peck, I see has got a different passenger, Steve Pavitt now. Mel Goodwin from this area, I'm sure there'll be a lot of support for Mel Lester Goodwin. Jerry Squirrel, Brian Palmer of course in great form at the moment, no description of machinery in that uh, list of competitors but I can uh, let you know that it is a Godden that he rides, and the Wayne Boys are going very well this season, so a good strong lineup of 500cc sidecars, four point scoring rides this afternoon, the first of which is almost ready on the line. see what the problem is on that start line but nobody seems too keen to want to get going. Lots of hands up in the air and you see we've got one outfit not quite on the line. The rest of the ride is now coming to the line in was outfit number 20, Alan Peck and Steve Habit that they were waiting for. So are we going to see a lot of changing in this first bend as all of them come together in that first bend they sort themselves out and it is indeed Brian Palmer and Scott Dunn that lead as they go into that bottom bend. Well as you can see we've got a red flag on this top bend 
We all got very, very close on that first bend, and indeed you can see we've got a problem with one outfit. So the rest of the riders will make their way back to the start line. As soon as the track is clear, we'll be ready for a rerun. Again, it looks as if we've got one or two riders not that keen to get to the start line. It moves up through the middle of the field and gets up in the third place. But Alan Peck comes through on the inside and goes very, very wide on that top corner. Does very, very well to hang on to it, Alan Peck. A brilliant piece of driving and a lot of good work from both driver and passenger to keep that outfit going. He did brilliantly well, but not taking it away from the man who's setting the base, Brian Palmer and Scott Young. They go up that bank straight, leading from Alan Lester Goodwin in second place. Alan Peck around that top end they come and you can see that somebody demolished one of our straw bells and has uh, sent that flying across the track oh, number 91 wayne boy is up in third place and getting very close to mel goodwood as they went into that bottom corner around that top corner for the third time as we see them come past us, Ryan even has time to look over his shoulder to see where the competition is coming from. And that's in the hands of Mara Lester Goodwin, but they've got a lot of ground to make up. Good scrap going on for that third place. Wayne Boy seems to have the best bit at the moment, or does he? He goes very wide in that bottom corner, he allows three outfits to come to on the inside, and one successfully get through. As you watch the come round off that top end. The first race of the afternoon for this class is going to be a win for Brian Palmer and Scott Dunn. Now on Lester Goodwin takes second place. And that was indeed a Jerry Squirrel that got through into third. four in your program but the list of riders are put down as race five you can quickly change that as event two the 500 cc sidecar heat one a win for number 71 that's brian palmer and scott dunn in second place number 30 mal goodwin and lester goodwin in third place number 34 that's jerry squirrel and paul stafford in fourth place number 91 wayne boys and simon king fifth place number 14 sixth place number five no 7th or 8th, the winning time 130.15 130.15 the time the numbers again 71, 30, 34, 91 14 and 5 well, I think they did this just to confuse me didn't they we go now back up a race to what was originally printed your race for the 350cc solo first leg event five it now becomes race five i'm sure it makes a lot more sense to you than it did to me but there we are that's what we were left with some additions to this one are number nine mitchell godden and number 27 colin sweeby number nine mitchell godden and number 27 colin sweeby and that number change of course for pete cornell he's not number four he's two one one that back straight for the first time into the first corner and we watch the break looking for number 175 Keith Potts a very pleased man at the moment he said to me this morning that I ought to pay tribute to John Godden he's the supplier of that Godden engine that Keith Potts is racing with this afternoon he's setting the eyes on Look at the way he's riding a tremendous ride to start the day for Keith Potts 
Assuring him in second place is Dave Mears. Neil Scopes is up in the third, but that's a good scrap for third place. Neil Scopes has not got it all his own way at the moment. If he's trying to work through for that second place, Dave Mears will be uh, no easy line to get past for that second place. But he's got an engine, 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 Neil Scopes on the outside, he's forced to go the wide way round, he'll try and cut back on the exit of the bend, but Dave Mears holds a brilliant line and doesn't allow him through. Neil Scopes brings you on the inside, trying to show a front wheel to try and make him in the room in this top end. There's a second plane going for a few spots, he's going to be close to the line for second place. Dave Mears, head down, hangs on to it. Neil Scopes has to be content with third. Oh, what a great way to start the afternoon for Keith Potts. He's indeed got that new Godden engine and he said he would be anxious to see how well it goes this afternoon. Well, there's no better way than winning your first race. So, race five, as it's turned out to be in your programme. Event five, the 350cc solo first leg. A win for number 175 and very convincingly indeed, Keith Potts. In second place, number 139, that's Dave Mears. Third place, number 15, Neil Scopes. Fourth place, number 22. Fifth place, number 25. Sixth place, 21. Seventh place, 17. Eighth place, 26. Ninth place, 19. Tenth place, 211. And eleventh place, if you want to keep your records accurate, eleventh was number 58. The winning time, 123.34. 175, 139, 15, 22, 25, 21, 17, 26, 19, 211 and 58. 123.34 the time. Well, I've given you 19 in the result. We've all come to the conclusion that Mitchell Godden will be keeping the same number that he's riding for his 250 machine. That's, of course, number 19. I gave it out to you originally as number 9. But obviously made things easy for him. He's put 19 on the 250 and 350 machine. this afternoon looking to see who that is that's got into that first bend that looks like Colin White number 31 who's come round off that top bend he of course is taking the place of number 22 Darren Matthews David Steen going second place at the moment but under pressure from his kitchen Colin White the has come in in place of Darren Matthews rise number 31 this afternoon breaking away from the rest of the field David Steen still there in second. Vakla Ferner has now moved up on the inside of Vince Kinchin and goes for third place. Very powerfully in that bottom bend, but Vince Kinchin has chance to come back underneath him on the exit of that big bend. We want to see Vakla Ferner in action again as he dives through on the inside of Vince Kinchin, forces him to go wide. He's now got David Steen in his sights as he comes down past us for the third time. Oh, Colin White in tremendous form, keeping ahead of three very, very good riders indeed. He wants to go up that back straight. He's got an incredible lead on David Steen. I wouldn't have expected to see this when I looked at the lineup of riders in this race. But as we see the checkered flag raised for the first of the 500 races, it is Colin White that takes it. David Steen in second. Backlash Werner in third. And we've lost Vince Kinchin. Well, I couldn't see where it was that Vince pulled out. Indeed, Vince does come round off that top end.
one, unfortunately. No Ben How, I gave you that change earlier on. But number one, Keith White comes into place of Dean Garn. Number 45, Mark Smith comes in place of Ben How. But we're already underway, and it's Gary Love that gets to the front as we go into that pit bend for the first time. Trevor Banks is up in second place. Adrian Moa back in third at the moment. He's going to the Gary Love. Had a long, long way to get here, but indeed looks to be making work his while as he goes round off that top bend, looking in great form. He's had such a good season this year, Gary Lobb. He's won some very, very big meetings and had some great rides. He looks to be in that sort of form this afternoon. Fortunately, we've lost Adrian Moore on that top corner. He and Bike are still on the track at the moment, so the rider is being slowed down. The race indeed being brought to a halt as the riders will make their way back to the start line for the rerun. Adrian Moa up on his knees already, we're pleased to see. Trevor Banks has made the better of the start this time as we go into that top bend. Gary Lobb in second place at the moment. He was leading before the race was stopped, but Trevor Banks has made a much, much better start this time. Sean Tacey up into third place. Great to see him out on the grass track again. Another one of those up and coming riders. He puts his hand in the bottom bend, though. We keep our eyes on those front two. Trevor Banks has seen him from Gary Lobb in second place. And those two now well away from the rest of the field. Oh, Trevor Banks was following Gary Lobb before the race was stopped. He knows that he's a very, very quick rider and close up behind him. There's quite a gap though between first and second place. Trevor Banks and second authority on race 7. Gary Lobb motoring along but not being able to close that gap at all as they go into their last lap. He falls down and he goes past us as well. He was going well in third place. So a lot of casualties in this one as Sean Tacey, you can see, is up with his left his machine standing on the front side. Not able to rejoin the race to the win for Trevor Banks. Second place for Gary Lobb. And we wait quite some time then to find that the rider coming off that top bend and finishing in third place is at number one, our replacement, Keith White. Race seven, and after the rerun, a win for number two, Trevor Banks in second place. Number seven, Gary Lobb, third place. And number one, that's the replacement, Keith White, in fourth place. Number 174, and fifth place, number 45. The winning time, 118.64, 118.64 for the time. A win for number two, in second place, number seven, third place. Number one, fourth place, number 174, and fifth place, 45. As we go into that first corner, we look to see who it is that made the break coming off that top end. Well, it is number 13 who we've not seen too much of this season. The very, very quick Rob Fortune. There's a lot of his grass track riding on the continent, representing his boat very well at the moment. Thank you. Very hard to watch him go into that second bend. There's nobody to catch Rob Fortune at the moment as he goes past us, leading comfortably from 
number 121, that's Alan Harmer. Number 60 is Mark Seabright. Great to see him back in action again. He's another one that travelled down from the Southern Centre. Rock Fortune in good form this afternoon as he comes round that top end, looking over his shoulder very comfortably and very happy with the situation as he goes into his last lap. Mark Seabright with all sorts of problems with his visor by the look of it. Comfortably hangs on to that third place. He's going to hang on as he comes round that top end as Rob Fortune takes the chequered flag and it is going to be Seabright that comes to the flag in front of Alan Harmer. One, Alan Harmer. Fourth place, number 47, Jason Hilliard. Fifth place, number 74. Sixth place, 38. Seventh place, 72. Eighth place, number 3. And the winning time, 121.79. 13, 6, 1, 2, 1, 47, 74, 38, 72, 3, and the winning time, 121.79. nine in your program we move into the thousand cc sidecars for leg one and we get a full lineup going in leg one promises to be a great start to the sidecar competition as it is pete dyer has made a good start with ivan matthews taking over from him as pete dyer pulls out on the entrance to that first bend well it looks as if he pulled out originally but now he's got his outfit going of course all sorts of problems for andy norris he had to take evasive action and disappear into the center of the circuit now Pete Dyer's got going, Andy Norris has got a lot of ground to catch up. Oh, Gary Moon traditionally going that very wide circuit, but Ivan Matthews and Mike Downs are the riders to catch at the moment. They go to the front in head of John Hiscock in second, but Gary Moon starting to close the gap on John Hiscock. Looks for that outside line again, John Hiscock looks over his shoulder. He knows he's there and Gary Moon now goes for that uh, wide line on the pit bend. He can see that he's got Ivan Matthews in front of him. A good start the afternoon for Ivan Matthews and Mike Dells. They're in good form as the season's coming to a close. But I'm sure you're all pleased to see Gary Moon and Jason Glennie having a go at this smaller circuit here that we saw at the best pairs earlier on in the year. They indeed pulled out of that meeting. But pleased to see they've come back and had another go and they look to be in good form as he comes round off that pit bend now getting himself into second. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dells go into their last lap. Gary Moon still in second place. John Hiscock holding third and Pete Dyer in fourth. see the chequered flag go it is indeed Ivan Matthews and Mike Dow is taking the first sidecar race of the afternoon and Gary Moon and Jason Gurney taking second John Hiscock and Steve Kenshin in third Pete Dyer crosses the line in fourth Mike Dow's in second place outfit number eight Gary Moon and third place number 184 John Hiscock and Steve Kensington fourth place number 58 
Now the course is Pete Dyer in fifth place, number 17, Dave Steer, sixth place, number 46. The winning time, 139.18, 139.18. 15, 8, We move into the second of the sidecars, first leg. Richard Jenner, Lynn Foreman, Terry Phillips, Ken Lane, Mick Cave and Gary Jackson. Six very confident 1,000cc sidecars. And as you look down these first four races for the sidecars, what a tremendous lineup we've got here this afternoon. If you've been following the big grass track scene over the last couple of months, I'm sure you'll feel fairly... Uh, confident that Ken Lane will have a good day he's been riding well this season of course he is now our British Masters champion as I say that he gets a tremendous start goes past me leading from Terry Phillips in second and Gary Jackson unfortunately been left on the start line so he's got a lot of work to do to try and catch up with this very very quick field Ken Lane and Mark Edwards go down that back straight <laughs>
race 11 we move on to and one change in this one is number two Neville Penfold he's a non-starter but in his place comes in number 31 Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby so straightforward replacement it should mean that we've got six on the line and a chance to see in action great Cheatham Kevin Stevens Colin Hutton Rob Wilson Martin Baker and Mike Baxter that's how they line up. We look to see who makes the better of the starts. Martin Baker has made a good one coming from the outside as he sweeps across in front of us. Robin Wilson goes after him. Colin Hutton is up there as well as Craig Cheatham takes a very, very tight line going into that first bend and gets himself up into third. But it is Martin Baker and Shane Cam that power down that back straight to get themselves in front of Rob Wilson and Vince Jones as we see them go into that big corner all the first time. Rob Wilson holding it very, very tight. That was a very good corner for Rob Wilson. He's now putting the pressure on Martin Baker as those two almost together go into that top end. Martin Baker just managing to get that front wheel ahead of Rob Wilson and holding that uh, pole position. But again, watch Rob Wilson on this bottom end. He's got a different power, of course, Martin Baker now is with the Yamaha power, the V-Twin still with Rob Wilson, and again he holds it pretty neatly tight. A tremendous corner from Rob Wilson again, he's now got the edge, he's got all three wheels in front of Martin Baker and gets himself to the front. That gives him the advantage going into that top end, of course, and he powers himself down the back straight. He's already opened up seven or eight bike lengths on Martin Baker. All it is, we look to see him go into that pit bend. And Rob Wilson really has got this bottom bend that's better than any other competitor that we've seen race so far. Marnie Baker still there in second, but now coming under pressure from Craig Cheatham. Well, Colin Hutton's holding uh, fourth place, but the pressure I think is going to come on that second place because Craig Cheatham is getting close. He also has been taking some very tight lines coming out of this bottom bend. As Rob Wilson powers it off the bottom end. He'll take his first check and bag of the afternoon. And it's going to be close for a second as Martin Baker just hangs on to it in front of Craig Cheatham. Second place, number nine, Martin Baker and Shane Can. Third place, outfit number one is Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. Fourth place, number 31, Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby. Fifth place, number 11, that's Kevin Stevens and Miles Simmons. And the sixth place, number 88, Mike Baxter and Neil Martin. Time, 140.59, 140.59. So as we move on to race 12 in your programme, there are two non-starters in this one, that's number 13, John Halsey, and number 92, Richard Piggott. I don't have any reasons, unfortunately. I know John Halsey and Tony Miles did uh, roll the outfit over at the Wimble Whopper last week, presumably either mechanically or physically not able to take part, John Halsey, but we have a line-up of five outfits by the look of it, so we must have had one more addition. As we watch the scene and come past us for the first time, it is Russelling and Paul Juric that lead as they go into that first bend. Alan and John Blewett still there in second place as they go into that first bend. There's lots of changing going on for that third place. Oh, a tremendous first bend there for those bank three outfits as we watch them sort themselves out. We go round that bottom corner with Russelling and Paul Juric. They look to be in good form, holding a very good line coming round that bottom bend. Past us for the second time, Alan and John Blewett in pursuit. Bob Mills it is in that third place and Tim Bennett it was that had uh, all those movements going on in that first corner but he's now back in fourth place. Bob Mills still there in third and Russelling and Paul Juric getting away from Alan and John Lewis. Oh they look to be in good form this afternoon Russelling and Paul Juric. Alan and John Lewis chase after them in second. Bob Mills in third. Oh, Jerry Adams it was that's fighting that out in the back of the field. I'm surprised to see Jerry Adams back there with Sean Pittock. He's got the better of Tim Bennett as they go down that back straight. One more lap to go for Russelling and Paul Urich. This is the last of the first leg rides for the sidecars. Alan and John Blewett in a good scoring position in second. Bob Bill is still there in third and Jerry Adams holding on to that fourth place having got past Tim Bennett. 
Villager goes round that pit bend for the last time. Race 12, this is the last of the first leg of the sidecars, and we know now who scored maximum points. Rustling and Paul Urich pick up maximum points in this one. Alan and John Blewett get second place. Across the line in third goes outfit number 33, Bob Mills and Jeff Sims, and fourth place, number 55, Jerry Adams. A win for outfit number six, that's Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number three, Alan and John Blewett. Third place, number 33, Bob Mills and Jeff Sims. Fourth place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock. Fifth place, number 12, Tim Bennett. And I'm not sure whether that was Jason Glennie or not. A winning tie, 137.78. 6, 3, 33, 55 and 12, 137.78. We now go back into uh, leg two, back with the 250s. Before that, if the owner of a yellow car, CKK851Y, could make contact with the paying in gate, it would be very much appreciated. That's a yellow car, not sure of the make, CKK851Y. If the owner of that vehicle could make contact with the paying in gate, it would be appreciated. We carry on with the racing, we're with race 13. John Dormer and his fifth leads going into that first bend. He of course had that disaster in his first ride. He pulled out halfway through the race. Of course scoring no points at all. Mike Appleton up in the second place. That's exactly where he finished. Well he indeed had a third place first time out. So he'll be anxious to score well again in his second ride. John Dormer in all sorts of trouble coming out of that bottom bend. Hangs on to it well. It allows Mike Appleton to get much much closer to him. Into the top bend we go and John Dormer seems to be fighting with that machine every inch of the way as he comes round that top bend. Mike Afton is very close. Car number 248 in third is Carl Wilkes. He had a win first time out, so he's going to make the point of the Mike Afton has taken over from John Dormer again. He had problems in that bottom bend. He's been fighting with his machinery when he goes into that bottom bend. Carl Wilkes getting close there now. Oh, Mike Appleton leading from John Dormer. As I say that, you can see that Carl Wilkes must have noticed that John Dormer has problems on that bottom bend because he's held a very, very tight line. Looks to go through the same way that Mike Appleton did and does go going up that back straight. So Carl Wilkes with a win first time out in race one this afternoon gets into second place. Oh, Mike Appleton has got the lead and I'm convinced we've done one more lap, but now I'll watch the clock. <laughs> I'm looking across your shoulder to see the lap going. I'm sure Mike Appleton will be aware if he's done an extra lap, but he comes round off that top then. He's going to see the checkered bag this time. Mike Appleton takes it. Carl Wilkes comes across the line in second and he is on the scoreboard. John Dormer gets third place. Dave Mears in fourth. Oh, a tremendous ride that from Mike Appleton. He certainly didn't have it easy at all, but he come through and held on to that first place. So, race 13 there, and what a very switched on lap scorer and timekeeper we've got in here. They stopped the clock after four laps. Yeah, you're right, they did do five, but not to worry, no places changed. <laughs> a result of a win for number 558, Mike Appleton. In second place, number 248, Carl Wilkes. Third place, number 76, John Dormer. Fourth place, number 139, Dave Mears. Fifth place, number 124, Keith Strudwick. Sixth place, number 32. Seventh place, number 300. And eighth place, number 71. The winning time, 125.81. 125.81. 558, 248, 76, 139, 124. 32, 371. Well, I apologise if this is going to make a mess of your programmes, but after discussion with the riders and with the class of the course, I can now tell you that race 11, the riders in a very few moments but the car for the course has asked me to pass on two sidecar competitors that the reason they were taken out was the fact that they were course gunning on the top bend it won't be tolerated so please all try and stay outside the flags we'll continue with race 14 at the moment I'll give you that result in a very few moments once we've got race 14 finished because that's already on its second lap 
And we've got some very quick riders again in this one. Harley's put a jacket on to try and confuse me, but I can spot that helmet. Of course it is. Mark Wordsworth in leads from Ian Rutter in second place. And then again, we've got some very, very quick riders here this afternoon. Mark Wordsworth, of course, had a win first time. No, the Carl will didn't manage to win his second ride. So will Mark Woodworth be the one that cleanly goes through the card? He leads at the moment as they come past us. Ian Rutter in second. Number 94, Jason Stott in third. And Richie Knight fighting his way through in fourth place. Oh, Jason Stott looking for second place and makes it. And then problem to Woodworth on the far side. So Mark Woodworth falls out on the far side. You see how quickly the other two riders slows up to him. It looks as if he's managed to keep the machinery going. But there's problems for him as both the riders that are close to him now. One on the outside, one on the inside. It is number 94, Jason Stott. That's going for that outside line. Well, that was certainly close to the line. And I look across my shoulder to see who was it that hung on to that chequered flag. As a result, four, number three, four, four. Three, four, four, Mark Wadsworth takes first place. In second place, number 94, Jason Stott, and only just. In third place, number nine, Ian Rutter. Fourth place, number 222, 229, I should say, Richie Knight. Fifth place, number 48. Sixth place, 741. Seventh place, 20. And the winning time, 127.11. 127.11. 344, 94, 9, 229, 48, 741 and 20. A second win for Mark Wadsworth in the 250 class. And as we wait for the riders to get to the line for race 15, I'll quickly recap on what I was saying about race 11. It was event four, the third heat of the first leg of the sidecars. I originally gave the result of 24, 9, 1, 31, 11 and 88. That's how it stands. I did change it, obviously, on uh, word from the class of the course, but following discussion with the riders involved and with the class of the course. We'll, of course, continue with race 15 already underway. And a chance to see in action again rider number 23, Steve Hines. Well, Steve finished uh, third in his first ride. Looking for better points this time. He finished second in his first ride. Looking for good points at uh, Lee Street. He was, of course, in second as well. So Lee Street, number 75, on the inside in third place at the moment. We'll be anxious to get through as both Dean Camier and Lee Street in second at the moment. That's how they finished in their first ride. They'll be in second because they were both together as they went in that bottom bend. Dean Camier has now got the better of it as he goes into that top bend chasing number 23, Steve Hines. And I think this one's going to be close to the line. So Steve Hines has got problems on that top bend. Well, a great shame to see Steve Hines pulling off. Done very, very well to hang on to that bike as he goes to the line. Dean Camier now comes off that top bend, leading from Lee Street. And Dean Camier picks up maximum points in his second ride. Lee Street gets second. So two seconds for Lee Street this afternoon and a finishing in third, John Pilcher. And it was a win for number 44. So, 44, Dean Camier goes into first place. In second place, number 75, Lee Street. In third place, number 49, John Pilcher. Fourth place, number 176, Adrian Phipps. Fifth place, number 26, Mark Giles. Sixth place, number 61. The winning time, 128.04. Well, if you look at your list of competitors, you'll see there's no machinery down for Brian Palmer. I can tell you it is God and power that he rides. 
Mala left a good win in second. Dave Collin has made a much better start this time. He's up into third place. As I say that, that's just been taken from him. As they go into that pit end, Brian Farmer and Scott Dunn really co-stopping them this afternoon. Mala left a good win it is. Let's go after them. Into that top bend for the second time. Well, they know they've got to work hard to catch this flying Brian Farmer. He really does look to be in great form at the moment. Jerry Squirrel is the rider that's up in the third and Dave Collins in the fourth. That's how they go into that bottom bend. And I'm going to bet that he's been close to the home. That's really starting to open up in the front. Brian Farmer and the Costa really don't look like being the tallest all this afternoon. They come past us to take that last lap flag. They won the first heat already. Oh, it's got done, looks very casually across at us as he goes past us. Obviously looks to be taking things easy. Mallon left a good one, fighting every inch of the way, but not being able to close that gap. He does look to be a very, very quick to be on the UK riders. But this time it's going to be a checker flag to take maximum points once again. His second win of the afternoon. Mallon left a good win, takes second. And number 34, Jerry Squirrel, takes third place, so they indeed finish as they did in Heat 1. And of course, it's Brian Palmer and Scott Dunn. In second, as indeed they were in Heat 1, number 30, that's Mal and Lester Goodwin. In third place, again as they were in Heat 1, number 34, Jerry Squirrel and Paul Stanford. We then have a change in fourth place, number 5, this time was Dave Collin and Rick Francis. In Fifth place, number 20, Alan Peck and Steve Pavitt. Sixth place, number 91, Wayne Boys and Simon King. Seventh place, number 13, Keith Baird and Rob Graves. The winning time, 129.90. It now becomes race 17. It's leg two of the 350s. And can you remember what happened in that first leg? Well, let me remind you. It was a win for number 175, Keith Potts, who's leading this one. Yes, it's the same man once again. Number 175, Keith Potts, asking to face two the engine. That's it. That's it. That's Second place, first time out, was number 139, that was Dave Mears. And although we'll be trying to find out, we reckon that the place is going to be the second place. So, by the second place, Ricky Sanford up in second place. Neil Scopes holding third, but it's a question of whether Ricky Stanford can actually close on the box. He's got his main thing in the maximum. Second one of the afternoon for the three days of season start. He's got a good commitment. One. He comes round off that stop then towards the central flag. He's going to make it a double. That's his second win of the afternoon. Ricky Stanford finishing in second. Neil Scopes in third. Oh, number 25, Jonathan Duke in fourth, and number 139, Dave Mears in fifth. He, in fact, had finished second first time out, so slipping back down the field. Race 17, then, the official result of the second leg of the 350 solo event. 175, Keith Potts, the winner, his second win of the afternoon. In second place, number 22, and of course was Ricky Sanford. In third place, number 15, Neil Scopes. Fourth place, number 25, Jonathan Duke. Fifth place, number 139, Dave Mears. Sixth place, 19. Seventh place, 21. Eighth place, 17. Ninth place, 26. Tenth place, 21. 
1, 11th place 58, and the winning time 123.84. 175, 22, 15, 25, 139, 19, 21, 17, 26, 211, and 58, 123.84 the time. Race 18, it's the second leg again. We're with the 500 cc's this time, so chance to see the 500 cc solo riders in action. Three, mind you, who had wins first time out. Number 31, Colin White. Well, he comes in place of Darren Matthews in race 19. Number two was Trevor Banks. He goes in this one. He had a win first time out. And number 13. Well, in fact, Rob Fortune goes in race 20. So those are our three winners. Neither of them meet in the second leg, so they could all, in fact, go through on a maximum. Or are the other riders going to make sure that nobody goes through on a maximum? We watch to see what happens in race 18. The only change is number 244, Ben Howe, does go. In his place goes Mark Smith. that gets to that first corner. David Steen follows him in as they come round off that first bend. Marvin oh, Skinching going well in third place, but David Steen is the man with the work to do to try and catch Trevor Banks. It all starts to get a bit close to that fourth, fifth and sixth place. There's a lot of riders batting out going into that fifth bend. It is an electric face this afternoon. He's had a win already this afternoon. He won his first seed, and David Steen in all sorts of problems on this top end. Oh, I can't see a red flag at the moment. But Mark, of course, on that top end, putting the red flag out in the safety very wide and connected with that first line of fencing. this afternoon, he's really always been at the front of the field, you might remember that first race he rode in, Gary Logg was showing him the way home, but then in the rerun of that race, he got to the front and stayed there, he now looks to be in great form in race 18, this time leaning from Vince Kinchin in second place, and Trevor Banks certainly looks to be enjoying it, he goes up that back to the Second place, but quite some distance back. Trevor Banks looks over his shoulder, knows it's comfortable. And Sean Tacey up in third place, missed out on scoring in his first ride. Going well in third place, but the man that everybody's got to watch is Trevor Banks. Maximum first time out, going for a maximum this second time. Trevor Banks is going for a maximum second time out. Vince Kinchin going well in second place. Chris Underhill has moved up into fourth place. This race really becoming a bit spread out. What's the second flag made ready? Race 18 comes to a close. The second play greets Trevor Banks for his second win of the afternoon. Vince Kinchin takes second place. Sean Tacey crosses the line in third. Great win for number two. You all know it is by now. Of course, it's Trevor Banks' his second win of the afternoon. In second place, number eight, Vince Kinchin. Third place, number 41, Sean Tacey. Fourth place, number 38, Chris Underhill. Fifth place, number 45. Sixth place, number 174. And seventh place, number one. The winning time, 122.40, 122.40. That's 2, 8, 41, 38, 45, 174, and 1. Two changes to this one is race 19 in place of Paul Hurry comes at number 06 Steve Jeffries and in place of 22 Darren Matthews comes 31 Colin White. It's 
to remind you of that because of course Colin White had a win first time out. Trevor Banks had a win. Indeed has had a win second time out. Gary Lobb goes in this one. He was second at first time out. Duncan Solhurst, he was fourth first time out. Straight. Oh, he wants to see them break coming round off that first bend. It is indeed the Cornish win. Gary Lobb has got to the front. Colin White is right up there with him, though. So this was promises to be a great scrap between these two. Duncan Toller up in third place. Now you can see Colin White has got through. Oh, Gary Lobb has got Already opening up quite a gap. Colin White looks in great form this afternoon. Head down as he comes off that top bend. Gary Lobb still there in second. Duncan Tolhurst holding third. Chris Tritton is up in fourth. And Alan Harmer in fifth at the moment. competition. And problems on that top bend for Colin White, as you can all see on that top corner. Well, it means, therefore, that, of course, Gary Lobb moves up to the front. I was just about to say that both Colin White and Trevor Banks would have been on a maximum. And Trevor Banks comes to always actually be watching this from the pitch. Colin White walks off the top of the circuit. Gary Lobb holds on the inside of the bend as uh, he comes round on that top corner. And it is Gary Lobb that takes the checkered flag. Duncan Horace takes second. Chris Tritton in third. Alan Harmer in fourth. Oh, what a great shame to have lost Colin White on that top bend. Last track racing, a win for number seven, Gary Lobb. In second place, number 74, Duncan Tolhurst. Third place, number three, Chris Tritton. Fourth place, number 121, Alan Harmer. Fifth place, number 73, Julian Phipps. The winning time, 123.59, 123.59 the time, 7, 74, 3, 121 and 73. to see in action again, Rob Fortune, Rex Lafferna, Mark C. Bryan. Garden, if you do, he hasn't gone in his first drive, that does look to me like it's Dean Garden that's broken away. Leeds coming off that top end, Vac Laferna pushing him hard. Rob Fortune has gone through on the inside, a tremendous scrap between these three. That is indeed Dean Garden, the Cornishman, on the outside, number 16. In the same place, arrives in his first. He's running out here in form in his second heat. Three riders together as they go into that top bend. Let's split them up for you. We've got Dean Garden leading. Vac Laferna is in second. Rob Fortune in third. Oh, Rob Fortune, of course, had a win first time out. Vaclav Berner had a third first time out and he now goes to the front but Rob Fortune moves to on the inside. Oh, a tremendous corner for Rob Fortune. Vaclav Berner comes back at him now. He's going to be underneath him going to that top end. Tremendous scrap between these three. Which one of them is it going to be that gets to the checker flag? Vaclav Berner goes wide. Rob Fortune comes underneath him. Those two together as they go past me and into their last lap. Rob Fortune certainly looked better on this bottom bend but Vaclav Berner is a great rider for digging that back turn into the lead. Driving it on the straight. That's where he picks up the in the middle of the straight. Again, he goes quickly into that top bend. I mean, watch those two come off that top bend because it's the checkered flag this time as they come to us. Rob Fortune gets the double. He takes a second win in his second ride. 
Vaclav Werner finishes in second, Dingan finishes in third and Mark Seabright in fourth. Fortune equals Trevor Banks, two wins apiece. It's 13 that goes in first place. In second place, number 10, Vaclav Werner. In third place, number 16, Dean Garden. Fourth place, number 6, Mark Seabright. Fifth place, 04. Sixth place, 72. And the winning time, 121.50. 121.50, 13, 10, 16, 6, 04, and 72. Or 121.50. Race 21 should be as per the program and let's quickly look at what's happened in the sidecar competition so far. We've got Terry Phillips going, he had a second first time out. Bob Mills, he had a third first time out. Baxter, Richard Jenner, Ivor Matthews of course had a win first time out equal to Rob Wilson. So a scrap between Ivor Matthews and Rob Wilson or will Terry Phillips and Bob Mills get involved? We watch to see what happens in the race 21. They're already on the line and as I say that we get underway. Ivor Matthews has made a good start. Mike Baxter is with him. Terry Phillips on the inside. But Rob Wilson, the long way round, goes for that outside line as they all close up going into the first bend. It is the two that had a win first time out. Ivor Matthews and Rob Wilson that are one and two at the moment. Terry Phillips in third. But do you remember back to those early heats? Rob Wilson was absolutely brilliant on this bottom corner. We watched to see where he can play the advantage again, but this time you can see he's lost out. Terry Phillips has got close to him on that bottom bend. And indeed, Terry Phillips goes through in the second place. Rob Wilson forced to go wide on that top bend. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dow are now getting away from those two as they go down the back straight. Oh, they throw the outfit sideways going in that bottom bend. A good bottom corner from the once again, Rob Wilson drives the tactic we saw him earlier on riding, drives through hard on the inside, gets up in the second place in front of Terry Phillips. Well, there's a lot of work to do to try and catch the flying Ivor Matthews. Really did put up a good performance in his first ride. Looks to be equaling it this time. Yelling for maximum points after two rides. Rob Wilson looking more comfortable in second place now. Terry Phillips, not able to close off him. Bob Mills back in fourth place, losing ground on those front three. It certainly looks as if it's well and truly sorted out. We watch to see what happens in this last bend. Neither Matthews and Mike Dells come to be leading as they come towards the checker flag. Rob Wilson holding second, Terry Phillips in third. And indeed it's going to be how it finishes as Ivor Matthews and Mike Dells take the checkered flag. Rob Wilson finishes in second. Terry Phillips in third, Bob Mills in fourth, and Mike Baxter in fifth. Hughes and Mike Dells. In second place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. Third place, number 52, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. Fourth place, number 33, Bob Mills and Jeff Sims. And fifth place, number 88, Mike Baxter and Neil Martin. The winning time, 140.03, 140.03. and a couple of changes in this one. No Neville Penfold and Richard Piggott. In place of Neville Penfold comes number 31, Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby. And quite sensibly, they've moved up Dave Steer from race 24 into race 22, making it, of course, six on the line in every race. One or two problems getting the riders to the line for race 22. Can't quite see what the issue is, but looks as if we've got things settled. Oh, the chance to see Gary Jackson in action again. He, of course, missed the start first time out. He's got away this time, and we expect to see him go well on a circuit like this. Dave Steer has made a much, much better start this time. Oh, Gary Moon moves through and picks his way through in the first corner. What a tremendous corner from Gary Moon. Well, he picked his way through the outfit as if they weren't there, and indeed, 
Marley can certainly surprise me how he got through there. He got through there comfortably and has now got himself to the front. Gary Jackson has got to go after him. There's problems for John Hiscock on that bottom corner. That is Gary Lane looks over his shoulder. Oh, Kevin Williams, I should say. That's Gary Lane looking at Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams as they look back to see quite a gap behind them. John Hiscock is not going again and rejoins the circuit, but Gary Moon, Jason Glenny looks to be in action this afternoon and looks to be going well. Oh, Gary Jackson closing up all the time, but he knows Gary Moon takes some wide entrance into the bend. He's trying to get into that angle. Again, you can see what I'm saying, that Gary Jackson closes up on the entrance of the bend, but Gary Moon just powers it all the way around. He loves to drive hard all the way around the outside of the bend. He relies totally on the efficiency of tyres. As he goes down that back straight for the third time, we will see the checkered flag for them this time as they come round. It's going to be his first win of the afternoon. Gary Moon has time to look over his shoulder. He of course had a second first time out and takes a win at the second time out. Gary Jackson is in the scoring chart. Oh, number 11, Kevin Stevens and Miles Simmons finish in third. Gary Moon and Jason Glenny in second place. Number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Third place, number 11, Kevin Stevens and Miles Simons. Fourth place, number 17, Dave Steer and Alan Cave. And fifth place, number 31, that's Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby. Sixth place, number 184, and the winning time, 140.38. 8, 23, 11, 17, 31, 184, and the winning time, 140.38. Oh, what a tremendous lineup we've got for race 23. If you look to see who's coming to the line, Russell Ng had a win first time out. Martin Baker, second first time out. Number three, Alan and John Blewett, second first time out. And number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, they also had a win first time out. So, two outfits that won their first leg, two outfits that finished second in their first ride. They're joined by Jerry Adams, no John Halsey, of course. He's an on starter this afternoon. But as we watch to see the riders come to the line, looking to see where they've been picked on the gate, rustling and Martin Baker right on the inside. Ken Lane's right on the outside on the green grass, so he'll be on the grass a lot longer than anybody else. As he now gets himself across to the racing line, problems for Martin Baker. Does very, very well to hang on to the outfit and keep it on the racing line. But... He had the longest distance to travel, but he's got right to the front. It's Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Russelling and Paul Urich get close to them, though, as they go into that bottom bend. Ken Lane turns the power on, drives wide. Russelling goes to the inside line. It's going to be a great scrap between these two. Psychological advantage of getting a win over each other in these early races. Oh, Alan and John do it back in third place at the moment. Martin Baker in fourth. Two. And Ken Lane again has gone incredibly wide on this bottom bend. Russelling tries to power up the inside of him. But Ken Lane fortunately was travelling sufficiently fast enough to maintain that lead. But still Russelling is right on his back wheel. That's where Russelling moves quicker going down that back straight. Oh, Ken Lane must be conscious of that, that he's made two mistakes already on this bottom corner. He tries to hold it tight, tries to close the door. A brilliant bottom corner from Ken Lane. Oh, there was no way through for Russelling that time as they go into their last lap. Oh, if you watch them go down that back straight for the last time in this race, watch to see what happens on this bottom bend. Ken Lane has been drifting wide in the early two laps. He closed it very, very tight naturally. And again, he's closed inside. Brilliant riding from Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. They take the check of play. They're second of the afternoon. Russelling and Paul Urich take second. Alan and John Blewett take third. And we wait quite some time for Marty Baker and Shane Can to come round and take fourth. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowles. In second place, number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In third place, number three, Alan and John Blewett. And fourth place, number nine, Martin Baker and Shane Can. The winning time, 139.26. 
Nine. Race 24 we move into, no changes to your programme, only that Dave Steer has already been in leg two, so six riders only. Underway with those six riders as they come past us for the first time. It's Pete Dyer that's got to the front. Mick Cave goes after him. Lennon Ray Foreman slot in the second place though from the inside as they go wide. Oh, I thought we were going to see a change there with Mick Cave coming through on the inside, but Lennon Ray Foreman held it. Now there's problems for Lennon Ray Foreman. Oh, I can't quite work out what that was with Lennon Ray Foreman, but they certainly slowed down that bank straight and had everybody else to come past them. Now they're back in action, but Pete Dyer and Tony Bannister away from. Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Jay Creedham has got up into third place. Andy Norwich in fourth at the moment. As we watch them go down that back straight, they're starting to get spread out as we've seen quite often in these sidecar races this afternoon. The gaps are starting to open for Pete Dyer and Tony Bamberton going well at the front. Mick Cave, no answer to him at the moment. Starts to get close coming around that bottom bend though as I say that. So we may see a fight to the line for this first place as Mick Cave could be just keying him up for this bottom bend. He's closer than he was the lap before. We watch to see what happens in this bottom bend because Mick Cave certainly seemed to gain ground on the exit of this bottom bend. He's taking a very wide line in. Is he looking to cut across the middle of the bend and come through on the inside? But a brilliant gamble from Mick Cave and Mick Stay. Some excellent driving. Well, Pete Dyer and Tony Bemister were forced to make the mistakes and Mick Cave took the gamble by going very, very wide on that bottom bend, proving how well this track has been laid out. There's a chance for drivers to take different tracks and we've got problems for Craig Cheatham and Pete Dyer. Brilliant driving and the passengering from both outfits there, managing, although they've connected, to uh, hang on to it. Mick Cave takes the checkered flag. Andy Norwich comes through for second place after that mishap with Craig Cheatham and uh, Pete Dyer. Tim Bennett gets third place, of course, and Lena Ray Foreman takes fourth. And a great, great shame, I'm sure. That looked as if there was some sort of problem for Pete Dyer. Disappeared. We're underway and we're running with the third leg of the 250s as they go into that first bend. A chance to see John Dormer in action again as he goes round that top bend after it's been uh, cleared off of all the loose. Looks to be in great form this afternoon, John Dilmer had that disastrous first ride where he didn't score any points, well I should say he scored maximum points because the points were being done as one for a win, two for a second, up like that, always done a few things, John Dilmer going well at the moment in his third ride, will be looking to make sure of a place in that final at the end of the day, this is his last point scoring ride. So he knows he's got to do well in this one, leads from number 248, Carl Wilkes. Oh, Carl was sitting in the group of riders that have scored only three points. John Dorber, comfortably holding the lead, going wide as he comes past us, goes into his last lap. Carl Wilkes still there in second place, Ian Rutter is holding third, well he's been scoring well this afternoon as well, I'm sure we're going to see Ian Rutter in the final, if he stays where he is at the moment. After uh, two rides, he's not even got into the top 12, so he knows he needs this one desperately to make sure he gets into those top qualifiers for the 250 final. He crosses the line and takes the first race after that short interval. Race 25 in your programme. Carl Wilkes takes second place, and Ian Rutter finishing in third.